Welcome to McFly Angler. I've never been a guide, but I still enjoy teaching people how to catch more fish. So join me in this video where I show you how I tie this fly. So you have to make sure and choose a hook carefully. You are looking for a wide gap hook like this, but with a thin wire and enough tying room at the eye of the hook. Also you'll want to make it barbless to get the beads on. Now these risen beads are a great price and work perfectly, and I like putting three on. However, make sure the last one is facing the opposite direction. You'll see why in a second. For thread, I like this Vivas 140, and I'm tying an olive. We basically want to make a thread bump here to ensure the beads don't come off the hook. It's a little tricky to whip finish this section, and if you don't know how to hand whip finish, then make sure you get one of those extra reach whip finishers. Now as you can see, turning the bead around allows it not to get stuck on the bump. I like to paint on some of this bone dry resin and cure it to make the thread bump look smoother and also secure it better. Risen also sells these little joints for articulated flies. I'm going to use this, but we're going to cut it in half and leave just the hook eye and a short shank. There we go, that's what we're looking for. Put the shank on your vise like so. Start your thread close to the back, near the eye. We need some type of stiff material like this faux bucktail, and this is to keep the hook from fouling on the line. Clip off a small amount, about a half a pencil width. Then taper the ends like so. Measure against your hook so all the fibers extend slightly past the hook point. Then trim at that measurement. This material is very slippery, and it doesn't condense, so when tying it in you have to put quite a bit of pressure on the thread to keep it from pulling out. I also like to spin it around the shank slightly. To further ensure it doesn't pull out, add some super glue to the tie-in. Now build the tail. You will need three feathers, but the feathers you want will have a pronounced taper in them like so. Try to get three of equal length. Measure out the feathers to about double the hook length, and prepare them to tie in by trimming the stem and cutting off the feathers at the base like so. This will help to keep them secure. Tie one feather in on one side of the fly. Now it can be tricky and you might have to tie it in angled up and have the thread turn it for you. It might take a little practice. Now do the same thing for the feather on the other side. Then try to tie one feather in on top as well. Now let's trim off a half a dozen or so gold crystal flash. Tie the flash on top of the fly with it sticking out just past the tail feathers. Pull the forward facing fibers rearward and tie them down as well. Do the same thing with three to four strands of blue flashaboo, but tie in on each side of the fly, not on top. Now we need some slopping. Look for feathers with more of a rounded tip like so. Measure these out to about as long as the hook, and prepare them in the same way as the tail feathers. Tie these in on the side of your fly, and again, keep in mind that they will want to rotate on you. Now you can whip finish this section, and add some super glue to keep everything together. Okay, time to put the rest of the fly together. Place your hook in the vise securely, and start your thread at the eye of the hook. Place the tail on top of the hook shank, and tie it in with a few tight wraps. Make sure the tail is oriented correctly and sitting directly on top of the short shank section there, but not overhanging the eye. Tie it in very tight, and even under slightly as well. Add some super glue to really make sure it does not come loose. So I know it looks really messy right now, but it will come together soon. Let the glue dry before proceeding to the next step. For the next step, you will want some bucktail, and I'm using olive and white. You want to take some sections from more of the tip of the tail, rather than further down. Start with the white tail and clip off a small amount. Keep this somewhat sparse. Then pinch the tip of the fibers and pull out all the short fibers and under fur. Measure out this section to extend out about as long as the hook, and trim it off at an angle. Then tie this in, angling downward slightly, and also out as well. Tie in another white section on the other side in the same way. Then we need to get a larger section, about double the size of olive bucktail, and prepare it in the same way as the white bucktail. 
However, we're going to measure this out to slightly longer than the white section. Basically, we want it to extend back about as long as the slop and feathers. Tie this in on top of the hook after trimming it to length. If any of the tips are covering the eye of the hook, trim them off to expose the eye. Pinch and rotate the bucktail slightly to distribute it more evenly around the hook like so. Then with tight wraps, lock everything down and also make a head on the fly with your thread. Now you don't have to make this look pretty or anything, we will cover it up with a cap. Last I take 4-5 to five strands of peacock curl, and you want the ones with the tips still intact. Align the tips as close as you can, then tie this in so it extends just past the bucktail wing. Make sure it's directly on top, and then trim off the excess hurl and clean up the head slightly. Now you can whip finish the fly. We now need some bait fish caps. I really like using these risen caps, because they're high quality and better priced than the fish skull. But I was out of the smaller size, so the fish mask number 5 size is about the same as the 4mm risen. Make sure the cap fits over your thread and materials correctly. If it does, then grab some gel super glue. Coat the head of the fly all around with this glue, and then push the cap up onto the head of the fly, ensuring it's aligned properly. Then you can stick something through the eye to make sure the cap stays on tightly while it dries. After it's dry, then add an eye with this Solarez Ultra Thin UV Resin. My favorite way is to add a dot of resin and place the eye in the cavity. Then put resin over the eye again and fill that cavity. Then cure the resin into place. It really makes it almost impossible for the eye to come off. Do the same thing for the other side as well. Then to finish off this fly, take your scissors and place them under the peacock hurl with your finger on top of the hurl, and strip the hurl to curve it downward like so. And the fly is now finished. As you can see, the beads are free to move around, and they will rattle, which adds noise. Sorry though, my audio was having issues, so it wasn't able to pick it up, but I do assure you that it's a loud rattle. The beads also add weight and keep the fly keeled. Well there you have it, I hope you like this fly. Tell me what you think or if you have any other suggestions for improving it in the description section of this video. Also, I got you guys a discount at Risen Fly Rods. They not only sell awesome materials that I used on this fly, but also some great rods and reels and other fly fishing items at a great price. And like I said, that price got even better because I was able to negotiate a discount for all of my subscribers. Type in McFly at checkout to get an additional 15% off of anything in the shop. Also below this video, there will be some links to shirts and other merchandise I sell. Please help me by picking up one of my shirts, hats, mugs, or anything else you see. Every purchase helps me improve my channel, and I could not continue doing this without your donations and purchases. If nothing else, at least give me a like and share my video with all your friends. I will see you on the next video, now you go catch some fish.